ah, this can't be fixed. Worthless junk. Oh well, time for some modding. I'm just Jake here with what's going to be a shorter video on just some tips and and tricks and advice on the thermal hunter when you're going in to modify it or if you're even troubleshooting it because I'm going to show you uh, some good pictures of the internals what they are how they work and of course this goes straight over to the interceptor because they are the identical blaster other than the accessories they come with and the color scheme actually all the spots here like the little white stripes the white insert the gray insert the grip area the pump and the rail those are all the same it's just that the interceptor is blue instead of red and of course the interceptor doesn't come with the heat seeking scope that makes the thermal hunter well the thermal hunter now the the bla the two blasters here the thermal hunter and the interceptor are two of the most easy and smooth Busby blasters to take apart. They aren't solvent welded. That's the number one key thing. A lot of these individual pieces come off on their own. The top rail. I've already taken out the screws. As you can see over here, most of them are in the little tray. The top rail comes off with two screws. One at the front, one at the back. The grip area. I already have it apart. It's held on by two screws. There isn't anything hidden behind it. So that comes off. The pump grip itself has two screws holding it together and that can be set aside. You can set aside all of that. You don't need to do the whole uh, submerging in boiling water and then the cold water, yada, yada, yada. You can simply pull this apart. Now, I've already had this shell off. There will be something I will mention. There are points here. I'm gonna bring in really close here. These posts right here, there's actually uh, three of them or four of them that be can, can be a little troublesome. This one here to the very front, here, this one here in the center of the shell, as well as this one. They can actually be uh, seized on with a tiny bit of adhesive, as you can see here on this one, and here. It's not a true solvent weld, but it looks like a tiny touch of it, but there is no solvent welded piece on the outside. Once you have the shell apart, you have the internals here. And one thing I absolutely love about Busby is, number one, the catch setup. And the fact that you use oversight, over uh, strength springs for both their trigger and catch. And the lock. Here is your lock system. Yay, locks are gone. <laughs> That's it. That's all there is to it. Now... Once I put a higher spring load on this, which this is going to get a the typical seven kilogram spring that allows this platform, this is the same shared platform as you can see right here. It even has the, uh, we'll go ahead and zoom in actually. There we are, a little closer view. This still has the connection point for the priming bar if this was a tactical storm or Eradicator, or Champion, or Reaper, any of this generation of Busby Blaster. The Night Attack also uses that, and the next blaster which I'm reviewing, which is the two-pack version of the actual Busby branded, one that, uh, let's see, it was the Light Master. I had to think for a second there, but all of them use this exact same plunger tube, breech, catch and catch mechanism all of those parts are interchangeable so if for some reason if you have a, a dead blaster that's any of those save the parts because I don't know for some reason if you broke a plunger rod the plunger tube itself save it it can be used in it can be used in again Reaper champion the adventure force eradicator adventure force night attack the light master from Busby the tactical storm and any other current spring powered either top prime or pump grip blaster that's magazine fed that does not apply to the monorail it runs off of a slightly different system due to the setup of it that's first tip my next tip is do not lose your trigger spring let's go ahead and just pull it out toss it in my little tray along with the trigger 
You don't need to worry about this bar here. The actual unit it's moving is the dart tooth. Don't move this dart tooth if you don't have to. It has a very tiny little torsion spring on it that is specific to this and you basically have to gut another blaster to, to find a replacement if 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 you're lucky you might be able to find one online but it's a very specific type of torsion spring that good luck on trying to get another one now to to drive home a point this blaster before i took it apart i did test it with a nerf drum both 25 round 35 round but the 25 round drum was the one that had the problem. The earliest thermal hunters and interceptors would not accept drums. They'd accept Nerf magazines, but not the drums. That was fixed later by a slight rework of the Magwell, and now they will accept it. So unless you find, find some early release version, you will be able to avoid having to trim the Magwell at all. You won't have to touch that now. Because current ones on the shelves will accept a Nerf drum. The only way you're going to run into an early release is if you thrift one. Which I'm trying to find a few of those myself for some nice little hydro dip paint jobs that I want to do. Because this is a pretty cool shell. Uh, it's got the pieces that you can remove. And for those of you who are cosmetic modders, all you have to do, take a drill bit and drill out. Because that, that is solvent welded on here. And there's three spots for that piece. That is this unit here, if you want to keep it white or if you want to paint it separately. Just drill out from the back side. Drill out these points right here, here, and here. And then for the gray piece to the back, it also has three, three spots there, there, and there. And that will allow you to actually access that. These pieces are their own individual plastic pieces as well. And they also are solvent welded on little studs in the back. One and two studs for, for that piece. Just again, a drill bit, be careful. Just drill out the stud, you'll eliminate the solvent weld. You won't ruin the part. I've done it myself for paint jobs. And you'll be able to pull these all out and you can keep them the stock colors or paint them individually. It's a very nice setup. I like the, the inserts. I like that better than having just sprayed on paint like Nerf does. The Busby's went to this and I hope they stick with this for all their future designs because it makes the shells very nice to work with. And while I'm at it, this plastic is higher quality than what they used to use. Very nice. Here is a expanded plunger tube for a retaliator. Now, you're looking at the volume of it compared to the volume of the stock Busby. This is the expanded plunger tube for from Worker for the uh, oh, Prophecy. I'm going to use it in my Sonic Ice Retaliator, which is going to require a little bit of shell trimming on the inside, but that's to get maximum performance out of my Sonic Ice Retaliator build I did before. That plunger tube isn't that much smaller than this expanded plunger tube for the Prophecy. Keep that in mind. One of the beauties of working with and modding Busby products is that that plunger tube is shared across so many platforms, so many blasters use it, and it's a fantastic amount of volume, especially considering that's your stock unit. But they're also easy to work with. Just simply pop this out. Now you remember you're going to have to work with this because it is attached. Slide out your slide out your uh, plunger rod and spring. And it is attached here by two posts. So just work it free and then you can leave that laying there. You don't need to remove the catch mechanism. You don't need to remove anything else out of the shell. Just get this to work with. And of course, typical typical setup for me, if you want to have a 120 feet per second or so blaster, you're going to knock out the air restrictor because Busby blasters, despite the whole debate on, um, on air restrictors, whether you remove them or not, Busby blasters gain significant performance by just removing the air restrictor because their air restrictors are well, quite restrictive. It's As you can see here, looking down the plunger tube, there's not any direct airflow. There is that center cap that is forcing the air, if you picture it visually, air from the, the plunger collapsing 
compressing the air in the tube has to flow over and around that cap. So it's already making multiple turns. And then it has to come out very small vents at the back of the breech. And air and water are the same principle. The most efficient flow is a direct path. Air restrictors do their best to slow that down. So you can have a 10, 12, 14, 15 kilogram spring back here, pressing the air as fast as it can, but that, that flow is restricted, which is cutting your efficiency drastically. So, especially on these, remove it. Always, don't ever consider even leaving it there. Remove that, and typically, the, the seals are pretty good on Busby Blasters, but they also do benefit from the, the traditional E-tape or Teflon tape around the plunger head to reinforce and give a little bit more support to that O-ring. Of course, you can always just order up a bigger O-ring, make sure you don't oversize it too much. Like right now, with that air restrictor still in place, I'm feeling pretty good resistance. So that O-ring actually has a very nice seal. I would be tempted to not even E-tape this one because that's actually sealing really nice. Yes, I, I, I probably won't E-tape this one. They're normally pretty good and only take one or two wraps at most. And for those of you who haven't ever watched my channel, that is just simply the exact same size as a standard retaliator spring or Rampage, Mediator, so on and so forth. All the popular springs from Worker, Orange Mod Works, uh, if you want to do a, a turf spring, if you want to do NF Strike, which I use in bulk, I order their spring, the uh, seven kilogram for the Retaliator. And if you simply knock out the air restrictor, do a seven kilogram spring, go ahead and E-tape it if the seal's not good, underneath the, the o-ring put on a good lubricant like say the worker grease or orange mud works which is my favorite put it all back together remember don't lose this spring here underneath the dart tooth you should notice i'm not even taking the dart tooth out there's no reason to don't worry about the catch mechanism it's solid it's a better catch design than nerfs overall for durability don't worry about anything else Take the air restrictor out, upgrade the spring, do the seal if you think that that seal is not a good o-ring at the time. Reassemble everything and you'll have a 120 foot per second blaster right off the bat for literally just some time in the shop and the price of a 7 kilogram spring. But there's some tips and there is a good view of the uh, both Interceptor and Thermal Hunter internals. So this is video more for reference and just to hear me ramble on about the uh, modding capabilities of the Thermal Hunter and Interceptor. Hope this ends up being useful, like I said, even just as a reference tool for fellow modders or beginners who are just looking to see what they can get into and have never opened up a Busby Blaster. But if it's helpful, that's great. Hope, hope that you enjoy it. It's Mongoose Jake once again with a video showcasing the internals and mod ideas for the Busby Thermal Hunter. And this, of course, again, also applies to any of their blasters using this same setup, which, again, also includes the identical Thermal Hunter and Interceptor Duo. But this is Mongoose Jake saying thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.